Hey guys, Saf here with another Raid Shadow Legends video and we have a brand new week, which means of course between fusions, it is time to see all the crazy silly events that they put in the game to get you to use your resources. What I want to do in this video is give you a breakdown of what I think are good events to invest your time and energy into, whether I think any of these events are worthwhile and we're also going to cover like the summoning news, do I think any of them are good or bad, just so you have a little bit of sort of second opinions about whether you should do something if you're on the fence about it. I can kind of give you a little bit of confidence if it's worth doing or not. So what we tend to see now is this new pattern that is going on where we'll have about a three week fusion and then there's about a week or week and a half between each fusion where they're doing very kind of what I would call crazy events, I guess, where it's very unique, extreme turn based tournaments, um, you know, some sometimes some special soul events, different things to basically try to encourage you to use your resources before the next fusion. Obviously, that's the idea. Now, I will say that the quantity and the free frequency of these events are a little bit extreme and obviously it kind of feels like there's never any downtime anymore to you to actually like do things like minotaur and other things like that um especially like the summoning events the summoning events don't feel special anymore because every single day there's a summoning events there's never really not a boosted summoning event which i think means that it kind of devalues all the concept of boosting summoning events but put that putting all this aside let's take a look at what we've got going on so they announced a new prism system now we've had two variants the first variant that we had was pretty good we had quite a number of free summons we had a week of summoning they were very good champions but they had rare champions in the pool so a lot of people initially were like this is terrible i'm getting a rare champion for these prisms but i kind of looked at it as a way of getting the best opportunity for you to get specific champions and also if you didn't buy the prisms they were basically bonus summons you didn't have before right it was basically a bonus limited summon pool and my opinion of the prism system is still that, that you should never really invest incredibly hard unless you specifically want the champion. You know, last event, there was a duchess. So I'd imagine a lot of big spenders would have wanted to go for it because it's going to give you the best chance at a duchess. Now, this time round, we've got a different system again. Last time they hiked the summoning cost to 80. They've dropped it down to 25 this time. They are treating prism systems very dynamic. They're always changing. They're experimenting. Last time we had a 10% legendary chance. Now we've got a 4%, but at least we don't have rares. So pretty much you're always likely to get a epic. However, the pool of champions are very good if you need them. There is two of the three AoE counterattack champions in the game, if that is still relevant to you. We have probably the best turn meter manipulator in Lissandra. We have probably the best non-void um, legendary champion to deal with some of the arena meta in Cupidus. If you've got the Venus with it, it's really good. We've got the best Dragon 10 champion in the game in Stoltus. We have an option for a clan boss team in both Alsgor and the Corvus, both excellent clan boss champions. And even in the epic pool here, we've got a Mordecai, AoE HP burn, really good. We've got um, Alika, an excellent damage dealer and arena option. Hoskerel, one of the really, like, Hoskerel on my free to play was an excellent champion, almost as good as a legendary for helping the account progress. Tyrell, very good. We've also got a uh, Virgis, an ally protect if you don't have one. Very good. Fenax, one of the best epics in the game. Stag, one of the best epics in the game. So there are good epic champions. There are a lot of trash epic champions in here as well. People like Luthia, you know, they kind of need an update. People like uh, Armina, not a very good champion. People like um, probably uh, this uh, Lodric, uh, not a very good champion. It's too one-dimensional. But Colin, you know, Aelfrig is very good here. So there's pretty good epic, very good legendary odds. So the pool of champions are always quite good. The opportunity to get this. If you've ever wanted a Valkyrie, this is the best opportunity for you to get a Valkyrie. Now, the biggest question is how many of these prism crystals are we going to get? And we can answer that question pretty quickly because there are some events going on right now. So we've got the artifact enhancement here. This is quite an expensive one. Now, this would obviously give me a free summon because I'm on 10 Prism Crystals. This would give me the 15 that I require for a free one. But this is going to cost you somewhere in the region of 30 million silver, right? Give or take. We also have a champion training tournament going on where there is a 30 on the top for 12,000. So we've got two events so far and... I would say that's going to give you, it would give me two summoning if I cared. Now, for me specifically, I have most of these champions. Apart from Al's going Corvus, none of these champions really I, I require, I need. So there's lots of low value to me. So I'm not really incentivized to get it. However, that's the, the, the beauty of the prism system. You don't have to go for these sort of crystals. You can basically just 
if it's a good event, go for it. If it's not a good event, don't go for it. If you want these and you can do it and you're doing the champion training anyway, then you can get yourself a free bonus summon that you wouldn't have had in another situation. So let's talk about the Oktoberfest events, right? I think the champion training is considered is meant to be an Oktoberfest because it's Mighty Uko, right? Mighty Uko's got a big beer barrel. This is always a good time to get yourself a legendary book because 10,000 points for a legendary book is as good as it's going to get for a champion training style event. It's normally around about like, 14,000 on a normal event it's easier to do the training tournament because you can actually gain points by booking at the same time and a bunch of other things we do have uh, a mortal soul coin and we have the prison crystals and if you are one of the top three winners here you can get yourself a mighty uko soul now i would say the mighty uko soul is only four star it's okay it would help you in arena with things like maybe temporal chains maybe you're using something like life harvest or something of that nature Four star is okay, but it's not as good as a five star. So I wouldn't necessarily put much value in trying to get this. If you are needing to do champion training, this is no reason why you shouldn't get this prison crystals. There's no reason why you should be negative about it. Because essentially 2,000 more champion training right now is probably what you might have been doing anyway between fusions. So if you're going for the legendary book, you might as well put 2,000 more points in and get yourself a free chance at another legendary. It's a free summon essentially if you consider that you were already doing training now if you don't need to do training like me you can just skip the whole thing and forget about it it's not a big deal but it's a pretty good event i think for a player who wanted to do training you get yourself a legendary book basically a, a sacred shard essentially it's what you're getting a limited pool i mean i know it's two percent less but it's essentially a sacred shard and then if you do win you can get yourself a uko soul we also have this champion tr chase training tournament. it's always constant this is what i mean it's crazy events we have a champion chase tournament they really want you to summon there is a series of summoning events going on let's see the summon party here reho is on today reho is one of the best void legendaries in the game for this higher end content really good for sand devil really good for shogun grove really good in the faction for just like healing and carrying the team excellent in clan boss if you want to use her there she is such a great champion that you know for a void legendary it's one of the good void legendaries to pick up if you want to go for it we also have a times 10 on the uh, on tomorrow so basically tuesday to wednesday this is kyoku with the crowned and this is going to be from sacred primal and ancient shards now we didn't have a times 10 primal on the weekend it caused some confusion and that's because we had a times two in the primal i don't think they want to do a times two and a times ten together so we will see things like they will do a times ten from a primal shard a times two from a primal shard but it will never be for mythical champions i think at least for the first six months until there's like a pool of mythical champions we also have yumiko on wednesday which i would imagine that's when krakens are going to be going crazy I know Scratch is still after his Yumiko, so I'm guessing he will try and pull every Void Shard he's got to try and get a Yumiko. Um, I will probably try and pull whatever Void Shard I've got for Yumiko as well. Uh, but I won't spend money on it because right now I'm not encouraging them by these events, right? If I've got a, if I've got a Void Shard, I'll pull a Void Shard. If I get lucky, I get lucky. But I won't buy any Shards right now. It's just a waste of money. It's just, it's just too difficult to get these champions. So we've got those summoning events going on alongside this champion chase tournament. As I said, there's a summoning event every single day. Now it is pretty good if you can get to 10,000, but that's a very big ask. For an Eternal Soul Stone, that 10,000 is a lot of points. You're, you're basically talking 20 legendary champions to get that. That's a big ask. If you're going on a crazy champion pulling session, I guess you could do it. And I'm sure many of the Krakens, you know, if we look at the global leaderboard, they're probably already at 10,000. There you go. Look, there's plenty of them there. There's already loads at 10,000 points who are going, I guess, for certain champions that they want. Um, I personally won't be going for the Eternal Soul Stone. I might try and get these coins at 800 because obviously I'll pull a few Void Shards if I get an Epic that might get me there. Uh, maybe the Essence as well is pretty decent. But if you are pulling, it's again, it's a better than normal Champion Chase because you've got you know these bonuses above here if you were pulling Shards and you had them available to you. Now, I did see Nub Raids do a video saying this Oktoberfest was a terrible event. I actually kind of disagree. Because so far, we've had Primal Shards on the top of winning a tournament. And then at the end of Dungeon Divers, which is about 6,500 and 7,500. We get a guaranteed Primal Shard for 1850 Dungeon Diver points. Now, keeping in mind, a, a sort of a Primal Shard is a little bit better than an Ancient Shard. Probably not as good as a Void Shard and not as good as a Sacred Shard. If we have a look at how they kind of put an Ancient Shard in similar pricing in the Artifact Enhancement event... It's about 20 million silver for an ancient shard. They're giving you a primal shard for 1850 dungeon diver points. This is the cheapest you'll ever see a primal shard. 
and it's uh, it's at a time when, to be honest, what else are you going to do with your energy, right? You can get Dungeon Diver points whilst doing champion training. You can get Dungeon Diver points doing Spider because there's a Spider tournament going on. There'll be a Dragon Turn Attack tournament. Those Turn Attack tournaments generally have some good Soul Stones in them or some other good benefits. So you will probably find that actually getting to 1850 for a free Primal Shard for that is actually quite good. Now, I'm using the word free a lot. I know a lot of people in comments will probably say it's not free because you've got to use energy. What else are you going to use your energy on right now? You want to hoard for the next fusion? You can do if you want, but you're going to end up losing more energy that you would have got by just a natural regen, right? Unless you're sitting on 7,000 energy, it doesn't pay you to hoard that energy. You might as well use it, right? I'm on about 500. I will gain more for my daily regen than saving it for the next fusion at this point. This is a really good way of getting a primal shard. It is the cheapest by far that I have seen in the game. If you think it's basically 5,000 less points than a, than the dungeon divers before. 5,000 is a lot of dungeon diver points. Now, in terms of how much energy you're going to need to to sort of get this dungeon divers, well, we know what the average on, say, a stage 20 is going to be. Per run, we normally get around about 12 um, sort of event points, dungeon diver points, uh, per running a stage 20. So if we've got 1850 here, we can just do some basic simple math. We can divide it by 12. That'll be, on average, you need to do maybe around about 154 dungeon runs here. Um, for you to be able to get enough dungeon diver points so on stage 15 we're talking about 106 uh, about 16 energy it's about two and a half thousand energy here for a primal shard and you've got four days to do this so you will naturally get enough of that energy it's about the same as all of your daily energy putting it into dungeons or something that you want now obviously if you do champion training it's a little bit different but you probably can still quite get quite close so i actually think this is a reasonable position to put a primal shard. There is a barrel at 2,000. I don't rate barrels at all. I think barrels are like the worst, like one of the worst things you can get in the game. There's just not many windows where you're going to use it. The only place it's valuable is if you've got a champion with already has masteries that is level 50 and you make it to a rank 6. Therefore, you might as well barrel it because you don't run it in Minotaur. Most people will rank 6 a champion, run them in Minotaur, and then they get to like level 45 or so. And then it's only like the last few you can put it into your your training pit and finish it off if you've got one slot free there's a few brews here 50 brews is pretty good rank four chicken is not bad it's actually quite a lot of brews it's, it's, it's 130 brews it's actually a fair chunk of brews to be fair um the potion and the silver is irrelevant so overall it's actually a pretty good event considering what we usually get in dungeon divers which is basically the end of dungeon divers is really good and the rest of it is terrible there's actually a substantial amount of brews which you can invest back into your champion training if you wanted to the artifact enhancement is uh is terrible it's, it's not great i mean you basically get like what 325 energy and 65 gems it's not not amazing um i i wouldn't necessarily invest much time and effort unless you needed to build a team right you might as well do uh, or gear cleanse if you're gear cleansing so you can do like quite a cost you know a, a silver neutral kind of event then you might be able to pick up some of these rewards without spending an awful lot of silver. But this prism crystal is around about 30 million. This ancient shard is around about 20 million silver. So it's a very big investment if you want to do that. So yeah, those are the events that are going on right now. Um, it's up to you what you want to do. If you want to hoard your resources for the fusion, which we'll probably get announced sometime this week, I would have thought. Maybe towards the end of the week, maybe towards the start of next week, we'll probably get some sort of a fusion announcement. We might get an epic fusion because they normally like to kind of do an epic one week fusion so that it falls in line with an October fusion. We always have a Halloween style fusion. So we'll have to see how it kind of evolves this year. Uh, but it's up to you what you want to do with your energy. All I would say is don't instantly look at these primal quartz and think, oh, it's terrible. There's nothing in the event. This is a very good way. It's a 100% primal shard, right? You get 100 quartz. It's 100. This is the equivalent of doing four weeks of Hydro Clash. And you probably can, like, some people will be able to do this in a day. Like, if I drop some of my energy in Spider, which I want to get that Spider tournament done, I need some silver anyway, I'll probably get a good chunk towards this automatically. So... It's not a terrible event. Don't look at it instantly through the rose-tinted glasses of Primal Shards are terrible. We know that the pricing of the Primal Shards are not great. But in terms of that specific Primal Shard, that's a good cost return for that Primal Shard. Yes, it will probably be a rare champion, but it is an opportunity for you to get a Mythical. And you can just save it for another boosted summons that kind of makes sense for you. Uh, you can see the last Hydro Clash here. I got 30 Primal Shards, but there you go. Uh, tonight on stream, we are probably going to be building a Fionite Hard 
10 team the first time i'll be building a finite hard 10 team we did theory crafting on the last stream we've also got to rebuild our Krisk for hydra i'm going to rebuild him back into my curse team there is also going to be the faction games on dead with jedi's channel so depending on when that finishes is when our stream will start it's probably going to be around about 8 30 p.m uh uk time maybe 9 p.m uk time that we start that stream so probably finite hard we'll be looking and doing a bit of hydra because we've got to prepare and get our hydra clash team done um, the clan is looking in a good position right now, but I want to get my 650 million in as well. Uh, so we will be trying to refine and perfect some Hydra teams. And that will be on this channel tonight around about 8.39 p.m. Just keep an eye out on the channel for the live stream sort of posting of the video. That will have the exact time. And yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. Good luck if you're going for any of these events. Good luck if you're going for your Yumiko or Riho. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.